Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech late production Tiger 1. Last video update, the model sprockets and idlers have been assembled as well as installed to the model. We'll be going over these additions in this video. Moving our way to the model's drive sprockets, the kit supplies you with two very nice, very detailed and very functional metal drive sprockets. These sprockets break down like they do on the real tank in that the gear teeth are separate from the main sprocket hub. The hub itself is made out of a single piece cast aluminum casting which is then machined in having its recesses as well as its mounting holes pre-drilled in. The sprocket teeth are also machined only they are made out of flat aluminum plate but still have their inner recess as well as their holes pre-drilled in. The holes match up perfectly with the kit sprocket and no adjustment or fitting is needed. You could literally build these pieces out of the box to have the model perform perfectly. Also included with the sprocket is just like with the row wheels they have their brass fastener retention plate system and these pieces are made out of photo etch as they are on the other road wheels. These sprockets are improved from their earlier versions. Over here I actually have a spare sprocket from their earlier 2002-2003 Tiger release. As you can see the sprocket is unlike this version here which is made out of three pieces. This sprocket here is one solid cast aluminum piece. The teeth ring are integral to the hub and then you would then simply just put on your fastener detail which would be for detail only and serve no functional purpose. The two sprockets mount onto the tank in the exact same way via the taper brush lock. Also in case anyone is wondering if anyone has the original Tiger 1 that was made from the first batch and they want to upgrade the tracks with a pair of newer tracks from Armortech. The newer tracks made onto the older tracks perfectly and so a new sprocket isn't necessarily needed in order to keep your tank up and running. As for the model sprockets, the model sprockets as we recall from the previous videos have been pre-assembled by the first builder. The builder did a decent job in assembling the sprockets in that he used all the fasteners, he use the brass retention clamps and they're nice and tight. The problem is that the builder who assembled this model put the sprocket rings on in reverse. Here we have the sprocket ring from the other sprocket removed. As we can see there is a milled recess into the sprocket teeth in order for the fasteners to have their flusher appearance. This indent is present on the real tank. The problem is that it's you have to pay attention when building these sprockets in that the sprocket has a indent as well. And <clears throat> if you're un unwary, the you might think that the two recesses are meant so that they fit into each other. And because they, they do fit nice and flush as you see here. This is what the builder did on the on the track on the sprocket. The problem is that if you build a sprocket like this and mount it to the tank, when it comes time to fitting on the track, like over here, you'll see that the track does not time perf uh, perfectly with the sprocket. The teeth do not fit properly into the holes, and the tank would be inoperable if left in this condition. Some people might panic and think that the track might be too wide and then try to take a file to the track links themselves. Whatever you do, do not do this. These track links are perfectly sized for the sprocket. If you assemble the pieces with the, re with the little recess pointing outward, like so, this makes the gives the teeth a wider gap and because of that the sprocket will mesh properly with the track as we see here. If we notice if the tr if the sprocket has the recesses pointing outward the track just simply fits right into place with no mods needed to either the sprocket or the track. So it's something to watch out for when you're working on these armor tech tanks.
While I was disassembling the other sprocket drum, one thing I did notice, is something to keep in mind, is that since these pieces are sand casted, sometimes there will be some imperfections in the mold. This is perfectly okay, and it actually replicates that of the real tank very well. One portion, though, that I did notice is that on this particular drum, there's a little imperfection over here on where the flange gets bolted to the tank. If we notice, there's a small little blister of sand that must have been missing when the pattern was pressed into the mold. Because of this here, this will make mounting on the, the fastener a little troublesome. It's a very simple fix and will be done with a Dremel, with a cutting stone. Simply just turn on the Dremel and remove the necessary material that's needed. Now, carefully, you don't want to over sand it. You just want to get it nice and even with the rest of the lip. Sanding and smoothing down the little blister. The piece is nice and straight and has a perfect spot now for mounting on the fastener for reinstalling the teeth ring. Keep in mind something like this is somewhat of an oddity and is really at the luck of the draw on which type of casting that you get. Like I said before, the other casting that I was working on did not have any imperfections like the one over here. And here goes the sprockets with their conversion now complete. In addition to completing the sprockets, another modification I made was to the brass fastener straps. Just like with the road wheels, I did the same exact procedure in where I bend up the ends of the fastener straps and then press them around the nut. This is as per the real vehicle and prevents the nuts from getting loose on you, as they also performed on the actual tank. In addition to the brass straps, all of the fasteners, both lower and on the, in and on the outer, received a drop of super glue on the threads. The point of the super glue is that it acts as a thread lock. The reason why I went with super glue instead of standard Loctite is because the super glue bl adheres better to the paint when the model is painted. The problem with thread lock is that when you paint it, the paint doesn't really stick all that well and remains a little bit soft or moist. This problem is not present with super glue. The wheels themselves are very strong and are very durable. Just like the real one, they're made out of cast metal, only rather than steel like on the real tank, they're made out of aluminum alloy. The idler wheel on this model represents that of the late Tiger, which is a smaller idler wheel. Like I mentioned in a in the first video of the Tiger One with this project, was that the early Tiger One actually had a larger diameter road wheel towards the beginning of the war. However, towards the end of the war, the design was altered for that of a smaller road wheel or idler wheel design. Their early Tiger One that they produced back in 2003 and 4 had the larger idler wheel present. Like I mentioned before, the road wheel is fully CNC'd and it's nice and squared off, as well as having its hubcap mounting holes not only drilled into the aluminum casting, but they are also tapped and have their threads. Inst installation of the hubcap is a very simple installation as everything, all the holes match up perfectly and the threads are all nicely represented. As for the rear idler shaft itself, that shaft is fabricated out of solid piece of CNC steel. The piece is very heavy and is very, very durable. In comparison with that of their Sherman rear idler wheel mounting plate, we get to see how much more beefed up the Tiger 1 variant is. This is just like the real vehicle and it's also designed to take the greater weight which is present on the Tiger 1 as opposed to the Sherman. For painting purposes I went ahead and added protective masking tape to the axle portions of the shaft. The fatter portion here is for installation to the adjustable idler system which we'll be going over soon and the thinner axle is for the actual mounting of the rear idler wheel itself. As for the idler wheel hubcaps those are made out of a single piece aluminum turning, which is all done on the CNC machine. The turning itself is nicely sized and fits onto the wheel perfectly in that all of the holes line up. The only improvement that I made to the turning was that I took the, the hubcap, I put it on my lathe, and I went ahead and turned down 
the piece with some sandpaper. The sandpaper removed any of the tooling marks that were left behind from the CNC process. Once the tooling marks were removed, the piece is nice polished appearance. It is then ready for it to receive its primer and then its base coat. Once the idler wheels are fixed to the vehicle, these hubcaps will be mounted. Image of the tank's position to go ahead and mount the securing fasteners to the rigidity strip and reinforcement strip which is found on the front armored hull. On the Tiger 1 design, because of all the stress that is in this portion here of the tank because of the tank's final drive, the designers incorporated a reinforcement plate which was to be fastened, which was to be welded to the tank's hull. These plates are found on all of the releases of the Armor Tech Tiger 1 and are a nice bit of detail. I took advantage since the tank is on its belly to go ahead and permanently add the hex bolts which are fastened in this location here. The hex bolts themselves thread directly into the aluminum of the armored hull and installation is a very simple procedure. With the addition of the fasteners to the reinforcement plates there's no need to have the tank on its back anymore. Because of that, I, the entire tank has been flipped over and will stay in this upright position until the tank's completion. Prior to the installation of the sprockets, I went ahead and plugged up the two fastener locations with the bodywork. As we recall from the previous video, there's a large cylindrical CNC aluminum billet that's actually the motor mount that's affixed to this location here. To affix that motor mount to the hull, that's facilitated by four large Allen screws. Two of the screws are covered up by the final drive, however the other two are still exposed. Once the sprocket gets put on, it's very difficult to see these two fasteners, when, once, especially once the track is on. However, I went ahead and plugged them up with the bodywork to fully encase them with the rest of the model's hull. Once the sprockets are on, I am still able to reach these locations with the airbrush to complete the rest of the paintwork. In addition to plugging up the two fastener holes with the bodywork, I also added the weld detail, which was missing from the Armortech model, which is that of the where the side hull joins to the rear plate. This detail here, it's just sculpted on weld with the epoxy and serves no actual function. However, once the sprocket or the rear idler gets fitted, this detail will still be present. So it's nice to add to the model. Before the insertion of the idler shaft, we have here the idler mount. In, on the interior portion of the idler mount is a small brass bushing. This brass bushing is slightly shorter than the rest of the idler mount. The purpose is that it has a small little recess here for the fitting of the rubber o-ring. Just like with the swing arms, the idler is sealed off from the exterior of the model via an o-ring. The o-ring is uh, somewhat of a newer addition to their Armor Tech kits in that they were not present on the first releases of the Tiger One. The o-rings themselves are very effective at keeping the interior of the model sealed from any moisture or any type of dirt that, and debris that could possibly enter through the small little recesses that are for the swing arms and the idler mount. Here we have the o-ring affixed to the idler mount. When it comes to installation of the idler shaft itself, as we can notice, I went ahead and lubricated the idler shaft stem. This is usual for all of my installations, however, for this piece here, it's specifically important in that the lubricated axle will help the installation of the idler shaft in that it's a really tight squeeze through the rubber o-ring and the extra lubrication of the grease really helps in this application. As for the installation, a good tool to help you is a rubberized mallet. You just simply tap it on the stem here and the shaft will slide in through the rubber o-ring and be seated in its proper location. Once the idler mount is inserted into the vehicle, it is then time for the rest of the installation. The rest of the idler mount consists of the idler adjuster. It's a piece of CNC aluminum that, if, that I have went ahead and primed it to match the rest of the interior. If we notice there's a small hole that's pre-drilled into both the shaft as well as the, sh the mount itself. That is for the insertion of a fastener. 
This cap head screw simply locks the whole unit together. I simply just slide it onto the location and I mount the fastener into the hole. Now, one piece that's not included with the Armor Tech kit that I like to add to this component is the addition of a lock washer. The lock washer really helps keep everything together along with that with the Loctite and you won't have to worry about this piece getting loose on you no matter how much the tank is driven. You simply just slide on the lock washer and a drop of thread lock and put on the mounting nut. The last components to add to the idler tension system to complete it is the addition of the low brass threaded drum as well as the long cap screw that we have here. The way the system works is the brass drum is pre-threaded and the large cap screw simply threads into it. Then with an allen wrench from the exterior portion of the tank, you then tighten or loosen the bolt, which in turn will tighten or loosen the track tension to whichever track tension you so desire. This system here is very effective and is used on all of the ArmorTech German tanks that they've created. I always like to add a smear of grease to the axle. Like I always mention in my videos, the purpose of the grease not only aids in the installation of the idler, but it also prevents the bare steel pieces from rusting or corroding over time. Once the piece has its smear grease on, the wheel assembles as follows. First there's a large washer that simply slides over the axle. The idler wheel then gets its ball bearings. Slide the ball bearing onto the shaft, or you could place it onto the idler, whichever way works best for you. I then line up the idler into its location, press it onto the axle. I then take the last idler, or the last ball bearing, and simply install that as follows. Once the ball bearing is in, it then gets affixed to the axle like the way all the rest of the armor tech road wheels do via a lock wash or a, a retaining washer and a countered sunk bolt. Once the bolt and the lock washer are fixed with a drop of thread lock, the wheel is then permanently mounted to the model and we can move on to the sprocket. As for securing on the sprocket, the armor tech tanks are unique in that they utilize a taper lock system. Of all the radio control tanks that I've built throughout the years, ArmorTech is the only one that uses this system. The system itself, once installed, works very well and is very efficient at keeping the sprocket onto the main drive spindle. As for the assembly, the taper lock can be a little tricky, however ArmorTech does supply you with a very good and very detailed set of instructions within their instruction booklet on how to install the system. One thing to keep of note is that this spindle here for the main drive is the one axle on the vehicle in which I do not add the grease to. In fact, it is even mentioned in the instruction booklet not to have any lubrication on this component when insertion of the taper lock. And here goes the sprocket affixed to the vehicle. As we can notice, it spins nice and smoothly and there's no metal grinding noise where the, where the rear fasteners make contact with the final drive. If you do assemble your tank and it does make light contact with the final drive and if all the timing is correct with the track no need to worry eventually over time some of the material will break in and the tank will perform smoothly without having any grinding metal noises emerging from this part here. Also if we notice the wheel is on nice and true it's not wobbling or is canted in any way and is a nice precise fitting. To help with the timing of the sprocket with the road wheels, I went ahead and I assembled a small length of track and while fitting on the track, I like to, or when fitting on the sprocket, I like to thread on the track to see if all of the teeth line up properly and as well, most importantly, if the teeth 
on the track line up smoothly with the first road wheel and that of the sprocket. If everything flows like the way it should, the timing of the sprocket is correct and there should be no need for adjustment. All that remains to be added to the sprocket now is that of the detail hubcap. The hubcap itself will be added to the model a little bit later. Namely, after the model has passed its road test. Once the tank is up and running and performs and there aren't any hiccups or any type of adjustments that need to be made, the hubcap will be affixed to the sprocket at that time. Once the idler is installed, it is then time to mount on the hubcap. As for the hubcap, since the last scene, I went ahead and primed and added its base coat. If we notice, I taped up the inner portion of the hubcap to keep any base coat from getting on the inside, thus making it a lot harder to install to the idler itself. Once the, once the tape is removed, the idler is a simple installation. I just line up the holes, add some th a little drop of thread lock to the supplied fasteners, and I simply just thread them on. Now, like with all fastener type flange systems, you don't want to go ahead and tighten the first screw that you put in, and you just want to get them all installed first. Once all the, the bolts are threaded on, you can then tighten them further, but I like to tighten them in a hex format or crosshatch format so that all of the fasteners are tightened equally without having the piece getting mounted on canted or not misaligned with the, with the idler itself. And that concludes this project update video for this 1 6 scale ArmorTech late production Tiger 1. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.